this place is insane. The city is the front line for people's mind. Everyone has a pistol and a couple of grenades. I'm not gonna lie, this is sort of a rough bus stop. Uh, with a fair amount of drunks walking around, so I don't feel like putting my camera up into the mix. And I'm off to Mariupol, and Mariupol is this city I'm, I'm super excited about because it's on the, it's close to the front line of, of the conflict. But the city itself, I know, has a different story to it. made it here in Mariupol. Mariupol, Ukraine. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Really far from what seems to be everything else. Airport's been closed since 2014. So there's there's really no easy way to get here. It's got this this like frontier feel to it. I was told 20 kilometers from the separatist territory the Russian backed separatists. So the, the conflict line is not far from the city. And then it's got these factories. These factories just like loom over the city. Immediately I felt the place. I felt the air. I started to feel it in my nose a little bit, my eyes stung a little bit. You could definitely smell it. And the breathing was a bit heavier. Welcome to Mediopol. So the big factory here, I believe, is as of stall. And there, there are a couple of them. It's interesting, I hear a lot of coughs, like people on the on the bus, on the street. And the coughs, it was like, they were coughing like it was flu season, like in the fall, late fall or winter, and it's now almost summer. Down here on the shores of the Sea of Azov, and it is, it's unbelievable actually. It's unbelievable, all this slack. It's like a mountain of slack leaching into the water and then people swimming in it. And the stink is, is horrendous down here. Oh my God. If I was a kid, all I'd wanna do is jump in this water as the kids are doing. And it's definitely not good for anybody's health. I went to this one neighborhood, everything's black. Like there's a black silt on absolutely everything. So we have a concert palace for the workers who work uh -huh. in the nearest factory over here. Yeah. And uh, all you can see is the ecology level of here because you see the stairs. Yeah. They're literally black. And the thing is that people clean them every day. You can... Seriously, every day? Come on. Every day. Come on. Absolutely disgusting, man. This color. These buildings, too, huh? Look at this red behind it, like this sort of haze behind us. So it's like this every day here, day and night? Yes, it's pretty much every day, and sometimes they have the waste thrown uh, in the air, and uh, it's literally orange color, like a daylight, but with orange color in the night. And, <laughs> and the people here, like this little girl on the bike, it's just all normal, right? Yep. 
They used to. She's smiling actually. I've been here last year and I saw the kids playing around, just uh -huh. running. And I have a feeling, like imagination, that I'm in the 30s and Stalin still rules the country by his steel hand, still fist. And it was pretty funny and I seen these kids just playing and don't even care about their playing. And they don't know. Yeah. You know, it's all normal to them. Look at that building. Look, it was right down in 2006 by white paint. Jesus. Yeah, and this one. <laughs> think. What are you supposed to think about here? If you'd think, you'd be uh, like overthrowing the government. Yeah. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Wait a <minute. laughs> Well, okay, you did that. I got it. But say the whoever allows this shit to to happen. Look at that place. Think to choose your future. That's the ex-president. Jesus head. Christ. Yeah. Think about the future. I can feel my throat. Yeah. Yes. It's normal. It's okay. Yeah, it's like it's okay. a daily, daily routine. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, never mind. Enjoy don't, it. Don't panic yeah. <laughs> here. You, you feel it every day. Just, yeah. Yes. Basil told me that he actually feels sick when he gets into clean air. We went uh, with Vasya to uh, our friend. Uh, he lives. Uh, in the countryside uh -huh. and Vasya had a very strong headache because the difference of the air so it was so clean there that he had this you know like noise noise nausea nausea yeah so his Vasya's head hurt when he got away from the dirty air yeah, yeah. an industrialized country needs metal but it is 2019, there has to be a better way than what's currently, how it's currently operating in the city because people are just getting, living in toxins. You can see some, uh, some, some kids, five, four years old, uh, and they uh, look really, really sick with uh, yellow faces, with the yellow eyes, and you understand the main reason of, of all of this shit. And, and it makes you really, really, uh, sad and really, really uh, depressed because you, you you don't know how you can help them. The main purpose of all of us, for all people, it doesn't matter here in Ukraine, uh, mm -hmm. in USA, uh, uh, where, wherever you are, is a health. For, yeah, yeah. And, health, yeah, yeah. Basic things like air. Ba ba basic things, like. but uh, all all of this, all of these guys, all of these factories, they uh, they they took us uh, health. Right? They uh, take your health. Yeah, they, 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 they took and they, uh, uh, they keep on doing all of these uh, things. And yeah, you can't change this, these, this infrastructure overnight for sure. There has to be some sort of filtration system that could be improved upon because it's, it's disgusting. It's like downright gross. Look, if you, if you dirty the water, you can always, that sucks, but you can buy bottled water. But if you, if you dirty the air, you're just, everyone's a victim to it. There's no choice in the matter. You can't buy bottled air. And then there were these guys fishing, like fishing right into this water, right where the, the toxic water from the factory was coming out. People are fishing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah fishing. But why would they? Under the plants, you can see. Yeah, Montana. <laughs> Some beautiful architecture here, some really nice architecture, and then you have this one building that's, you know, in the conflict. It was obviously destroyed. You can see bullet holes in there, and it's burnt out. And people who wanted to create uh, the Nesk People uh, Republic uh -huh. uh, came here and uh, started to shoot, um, and we had some fightings here. And literally block away is this new park I don't know if it's a new park but it's redone it's absolutely beautiful the juxtapositions here are insane like the the mix like the contrast
the main battle was there. Was right there. Yep. No shit. Yeah. Uh, they had a couple of buses here, uh, barricades, and BTR went over these barricades. And uh, here was the guys with the rifles. Everybody was shooting. So the there. separatists had control of this building. Yeah. And on the other side was the pre-Ukrainian meeting. Wow. And the guys just went over there, had some fight, get back. And now they they built a nice park. Are they going to rebuild this? Yeah. Uh, you know, five years ago, you can see the people walking around with the Russian flags here in 2014. From a geopolitical perspective, this place is super important. And I believe everyone knows that. Like, it has to stay Ukrainian. If this fell, if this city fell, that would, that would be a huge blow. Uh, this city is the front line for a people's mind. Uh, people want to look on the West here, and I can see that people changing their mentality more to the Western side than to the East. So huh. this city is very important for this battle for the mines. It's a soft power battle too. And I've seen, I've seen this in other parts of the world. I saw it in Syria before the war there. When big powers are trying to win over a population, they set up things and they invest in the infrastructure and they they're trying to win minds, basically, is what's going on. And it's a tactic and it's usually quite effective. But you can see it here. You can see uh, USAID all over the place. You can see other European donors putting money into the infrastructure. It's not because only they just want to be nice and help out. Uh, no, it's creating influence. You have these extremes, you have this, these factories that are looming over the city and making all the air dirty, but then you have like this crazy opposite force here. And you have the young people, and the young people are the life of this city. I felt the young people had a lot of optimism. Like they all uniformly said they hate the ecology here, but they all uniformly said, most of them, no, actually some wanted to move out, but most were like, yeah, I want to build my city. Yeah, it's getting better. The young people start to see that uh, they have a possibilities. They cannot leave this city. They can live here and develop here something. And it became more interesting for them because uh, earlier people just left the city all the mm -hmm. time because they never saw the future in, in this place. And as I looked out into these smokestacks, I, I didn't really get them at first, but I, I saw, like over some time, I saw, went to this one coffee shop in this, this woman, uh, Lisa, and her, and her family owned it. Opened one uh, cafe, another uh, one, and uh -huh. this is the third one we will open soon. Do you love your city? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. You love it. Uh, earlier I wanted to, to move to uh -huh. Berlin, to Kiev. I didn't. I don't want to live here. I didn't want to live here. But uh, then I uh, thought and I decided to. It's better to live here, uh, to work in my place with mm -hmm. my parents. In uh, uh, but uh, travel to yeah. Yeah, wherever I want. I had amazing food here. I had. I love ramen, and I ate some of the best ramen I've ever had in my life. And so you have this this crazy like insane mix here. You have this uh, artistic community, different museums and different outlets for artists. You have this watchtower in the center of the city. There's this co-working space. I walked into this co-working space. It was beautiful. It was like brand new. Again, something you'd see out of like a, a very modern, dynamic city. I was told by everyone it, it's safe right now. 
But now it's not so uh, dangerous. Actually, it's much more safer than any other city like Kiev or Kharkiv because a lot of military here, a lot of uh, rec, a lot of special services here. After a while, many people moved from here as uh -huh. they leave uh, the city, uh, and uh, I wanted to leave the city too. But yeah. uh, then I uh, think it's not so bad. <laughs> You don't really appreciate that peaceful environment that you have. Right. But then after some tough times, you start to appreciate it. You understand that peace is very important in our life. And you can develop yourself when it's peaceful around. Um, Do you feel it's more peaceful now? Yes, I feel it's more peaceful now than in 2014 or 15. And I felt it. I felt like even though it's gone through some seriously tough times and it's got a very rough edge to it. It actually felt quite peaceful. And you get on some of these streets and they're beautiful, like tree-lined streets, families, baby carriages, just a really cool, mellow vibe. And for a moment, you forget about the air in, the, in these factories. Look, nobody has control over these big forces that operate these factories. And these factories bring jobs. And I get it, a lot of the city, I don't know a percentage, I heard all different variations. I heard from 10% to like 40% are employed by these, these factories. They bring jobs. And so many people need and want these companies to be here, obviously. So yeah, that's why it has two sides. Like yeah. people can't live without plant because everything actually was built because of these plants it uh, was uh, like the plant like, came first and then the city came it, sort of yes something like that yeah and some people came to uh, our city just to work here and right. to, to get paid it's more about older people or um, not so young people because right. they um, just got used to live in those uh, conditions uh -huh. and they don't want to change something because they're afraid of changes. Some inspirational stuff on the screen. Yeah, they, yeah. they uh, wrote now, uh, let's make safety our uh, goal. It was written now. What would you write on the board? If you could write something on the board, what would you write on it? <laughs> oh, yeah, just stop it. <laughs> This is probably what it was like when the Industrial Revolution was going on. Like these conditions, this air quality. It comes down to bottom line and people making money and that's all that matters. And the human toll and the human cost is not a consideration for the people that run these operations. My grandfather always been working on the factories. He's 72 now, but almost all his friends except one died already because of cancer, because of this toxic shit. We have a mentality in our people. Uh, we will go to a hospital when it's too late. We're living in shit, but I will be much happier if this, if here will be much less of this shit. And I will take my hand to create something to make it better. I will feel better personally. So leaving the very nice restaurant, going up to the street and boom there it is that smell that Mariupol smell can you see it what the haziness no <laughs> but you you also drink a liter of coca-cola every day and swim in the water so you don't feel anything you're well I you're a mutant all right, Broski, it's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. It's kindergarten. This city is one of the most interesting, bizarre, mixed up, extreme, beautiful, depressing places I've ever been in my life. There are a lot of forces at play. Despite the air, the air kills me, but despite that, like there's something really likable about this city. And I'm really glad I came. At the end of the day, it's, it's always the people though. And the people stepped up, helped out. So authentic, so kind, so genuine.
that's my story.